In the previous video, we looked at the binding energy curve and how there are two possible nuclear reactions, fusion and fission, and that will enable elements to transition to other types of elements to become more stable. And the ultimate goal is to be stable like iron, that is goals. But what makes iron stable? Why is stability a problem? That's what you're going to answer in this video before we go on to learn about fusion and fission processes. Now, here I have with me the periodic table of all the elements we know in existence. Look at these beautiful colors. So when you see all these things, like for example, this one, the number on top is the atomic number, also known as the proton number. So if you have only one proton in your nucleus, you are hydrogen. If you go down the line beep, to this side, you will see that we are now at helium and helium has two protons. That's what identifies helium as helium. How many neutrons you have, I don't care. As long as you have two protons, you are helium. And you can keep going. Three protons, four protons, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way until like 100 over protons in one nucleus. But there's something strange here. I thought positive charges repel. Remember when we learn in electric fields, when you have a positive charge and a positive charge, they should have a repulsive force. They don't like each other. There'll be an ele uh, electric force that kind of wants to push them apart. So if this is true, then none of the elements should be able to form. How are they even staying together? How is this even possible? Positive stick with positive. Something is broken. Or there is something else we don't know that's happening in the nucleus. So yes, repulsive for like charges, but this is only looking at electric force. There are more forces in there. Or is it miss? Maybe there's gravitational force? Now, between these small particles, it's negligible. Negligible. So we are not looking at gravitational force. There's another force that can attract them. Well, because this G-force is attractive. We need something else that can attract two protons together. Otherwise, this is not going to happen. How are you going to have two protons sticking close to each other? So the answer is... Jing, 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 jing. <laughs> the answer lies in the Amak scheme of this question. So they actually asked this question before and I think all the students died because they didn't know how to answer this. So we're talking about the same thing. If you have two protons together, why must there be some other force between, the, between these protons in the nucleus? Because you are not going to have anything else attractive. Your electric force that repels both of these is very big. And although you may argue that there is gravitational force between them, this is very small. And this one is attractive. Electric force, repulsive. So in this one, they will ask you to explain. Well, in the fun part, they ask you to calculate the repulsive and attractive force. I think the repulsive force was 58 newtons. I suggest you to go try out the whole pass here and see for yourself the one that killed everyone in 2014. Uh, and the attractive force is way, 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 way smaller. This is only 4.7 times 10 to the negative 35 newton. That's cannot fight the electric force. So that's the first part. And then they ask you, well... What is the additional force then? Not gravitational, not electric, what else? There is this thing that you have learned before called the strong nuclear force in the particle physics chapter. Strong nuclear force. And this force acts between quarks, also known as your protons and neutrons. Like quarks, quarks are inside your proton and neutron. So I'm just going to call this, these are the forces that act between nucleons, all the protons and neutrons. Ah, and this strong nuclear force, if you forgot, has a short range. It only acts very closely. Now, why do they only act on a short range? Let's look at this graph first. So, firstly, you have your electric repulsive force. And this is your electric force, you know, positive charges, they repel each other. And you can calculate this with your KQQ over R squared. Electric fields repel each other. Okay, uh, but then there's this... This um, strong nuclear force, I don't even know how to label this. Let's just put this as a green color attractive force. Whoa, that's huge. Oh, I know the force is strong, but not that strong. Okay, so strong nuclear force. I don't know what the equation is. We'll just put a question mark here. It doesn't matter at this point. We just know it's strong, very strong, strong. And it is attractive and only acts on a short range. So short range like you have to be very close so the previous electric force is long range you could be up to infinity 
and you would still experience the electric force. And the graph looks like that. Pew, slanting down. Now, attractive force, as you can see, is a ooh, interesting shape. It's not... It's something else. Like, only it kicks in when you are like 5 femtometers. Very, very small. Then you will start to experience an attractive force and it's, you know, on the negative side of the graph, which tells you that it's attractive. So if you're close enough, then you'll start to experience that force. But if you look at the electric force, the scale is like 200 femtometers, where even is 5 femtometers, like barely here. So for most part, you would be repelling Except when you hit close enough, that arrow, then this super strong, attractive, strong nuclear force will take over and pull you in. Well, because you are a nucleon, you have quarks. So if we put together both graphs, it looks something like this one here, this red color one, it goes down and up. Ooh. So you would need a lot of energy to bring something really close. They're still repelling. But once you hit that sweet spot, where the strong nuclear force takes over. Ah, so you see, the strong nuclear force dominates at smaller separation. It suddenly is so strong. Then you will pull together nuclei. And then you can go down here. And finally, two protons, the magic miracle. Two protons can stick together. Wow. How is that amazing? I mean, that's why we have elements and that's why we exist. So, back to this question. Why must you have a short range? Well... For a few reasons, you want to explain that firstly, when you're outside the proton, is repulsion, which is fine. Uh, and this attractive force should only act on a very small range because if not short range, everything will stick together because it's really, really strong. If everything stick together, all particles in the universe will just stick together. Even if you are super far away, they will pull you in and stick together. That doesn't sound very, that sounds catastrophic. So. Just note that uh, it has to be short range because you only want it to act when the two protons are very close and then pew, you stick them together. This is the magic of what holds the nucleus together. So now that we know what holds the nucleus together, you can understand why, oh, as we get bigger and bigger, more and more protons stick together, you would need some nucleons to help hold things together. So here, not just protons, you're going to have neutrons there as well to make sure it's stable. Because when... You are putting together a nucleus and it gets bigger and bigger. You are going to have elastic. I wouldn't use the word elastic. Let's call this electric repulsion. Repulsion of protons. So positive repel with positive. And that strain the nucleus. So you cannot just have two positive together. Lah. They may not have enough strong nuclear force to hold together. So you want them to be more stable. So uh, elements that exist naturally, you would have a lot more neutrons. And that will contribute to the strong nuclear force to hold everything together. That's why, as we get bigger and bigger, there are more and more neutrons in the nucleus. Because too many protons that hate each other. Oh, yo, we need to help them stay together, okay? Imagine you're in a friend group. All the protons hate each other. So you just need more people to like, hey guys, chill. You know, we can stay together in this same place. It's okay. I know you guys hate each other. Let's just be together. So uh, physicists took this graph. Like, wow, chemists, nice periodic table. Let's pick another one. So now they did this and they plotted a graph of proton number against neutron number for all kinds of elements, including their isotopes as well. So on the, on the vertical axis, this is your proton number. They won't ask this in CIE. It's more for extra knowledge for you. And this is a neutron number. So you don't need to draw this graph or worry about it. But in uni, you might come across this. Yeah, whether in chemistry or physics, I don't know which one. Lah. So you notice um, this is a one-to-one -one ratio. This black line. Okay. If you have 50 proton, you have 50 neutron. But if you notice, most elements don't exactly fall on that line, especially when they get bigger and bigger. Oh no. So you see, huh? uh, these black dots are what is stable. If you notice, the black dot is somewhere in the middle. Okay. All the black spots, such as this one and this one, it starts to go away from the one-to-one -one ratio. So as you get heavier and heavier, you have more protons, you have more neutrons, you are somewhere in this part where you are like really big nucleus. Here, your neutron to proton ratio is very high. And you're also not as stable. I mean, you try your best to be, but not as stable. So this is this region right here. Very high ratio, okay? So you see there's not really a stable black color line here anymore. It's just, 
You're going to be radioactive. You're going to release. You're going to break down. You're going to have fission. All kinds of stuff are going to happen to you. So let's go back to this binding energy graph. Now we know what holds the nucleus together. So why is the graph shaped like this? So here's a little diagram to remind you that in the nucleus, uh, there are two competing forces. The strong nuclear force wants to hold things together. This is attractive. And it is possible uh, attractive between neutrons and protons. Ooh, but there is this electrostatic or electric force repulsion. This is between proton and proton. They just hate being close to each other. They just cannot. They're just like, can you go away? So if you notice in the earlier part for this region here, when you have relatively few protons, you're like, okay, I guess we could kind of attract each other. But as you get bigger and bigger, we have a problem because these repulsion forces act at infinity. So a proton can hit this proton, can hit that proton, can hit that proton, and all the electric force is everywhere in the, throughout the entire nucleus. But your attractive force is a short range. So this one is short range. Means between this one and this one you attract. This one and your neighbor you attract. Neighbor to neighbor, neighbor to neighbor, neighbor to neighbor. So you see something funny is how to happen. Electric force is acting everywhere, but neutron can only attract like neighbor to neighbor kind of thing. So that's why this graph is shaped in a certain way. Because when you get big enough, your short range force cannot really hold everything together properly. Your short range force can only hold its neighbors together. So as you go to a larger nucleus type, see these are very large, 238 nucleons, 235, 205, oh my goodness. They have a tendency to break up, split up. And that's what we call fission. So they will split up and become smaller. Now the other one, fusion. Oh, this one is joined together, combined. Nucleus can combine. Nuclei can combine. And that is what we're going to learn more in the next two videos. Fusion and fission. But remember, the core of it, how does the nucleus stay in one piece? Two competing forces. Strong nuclear, electrostatic repulsion. Just a final recap before I end the video. is something to help both some of us read a bit if you feel like, oh, I need some words to help me here, miss. Okay. So the shape of the graph, what graph? This graph goes up to a maximum, most stable. This one we call balanced, a good balance between forces. Balance between the, at the, the attractive and repulsive forces. And the other parts? Let's see how we can explain that. CIE has so far never asked this up other than that past year up there. But just in case they do, you got to be ready. Okay, so at low values of A, what is low values of A? Means you are light nuclei. See this A, mass number A? You are here, you are light nuclei. Attractive forces dominate. So the main force is the attractive nuclear forces. The repulsive force, eh, not very strong la, compared to this attractive nuclear force. So this is a strong nuclear force. And this is for light nuclei. But at high values of A, it's called heavy nuclei. They have many, many proton, many, many nucleon. Who dominates now? So you can say that at this one, the repulsive forces begin to dominate. Oh, and because of that, these nuclei, as you get bigger and bigger, you're more unstable. And you tend to break apart. This is a process called fission, and it can happen. Lah. Right and hold together. Okay, so why is there a peak? Mm, this peak. The peak in binding energy, like I mentioned, is the interplay or the balance between the two forces. Uh, Coulombic repulsion of the protons and oops, I guess missing out the Coulombic repulsion of protons and ah, I should add here and nuclear attraction between nucleons, which is proton and neutron in the nucleus. Okay, so that is how uh, this graph came to be. You can explain why it looks like that. Okay, why is this stability here? Because of two forces, they are trying to balance each other out. Okay, so that's all for this video. Hope that was helpful in helping you think about why do elements, why are elements even possible? Because positive charges should repel 
But hey, we have a stronger nuclear force that is short range. So that's all for this video. I'll see you in the fusion and fission videos next. We're going to have such a lots of fun to see how we can mess around with all these elements and nuclei. That's all for this one. See you. Bye-bye.